vegan butterbeer syrup, people. That's what we're going to start next, which to me is the most exciting because I know a lot of you are vegans and you can't get this at Universal Studios because it's not vegan. And that's really kind of a pain in the you know where, the behind. So what we're going to do first, let me get a couple of these guys ready, is I'm going to use full on vegan butter. If you wanted to have this not have butter, you can use it optionally instead of actually full on doing it. But here's the thing, it does add some really good flavor. So we're going to melt about two tablespoons of vegan butter in here. Let me show you the Actually, you guys can kind of see that. You don't really need to see much more than this. I'm going to turn on my arch nemesis, the induction burner, sometimes. I'm not good with the whole it's numbers thing. So you want to have it kind of just on medium to medium low heat. And I'm going to open up a can of organic coconut milk. So depending on what time of the year you make this, either it, the coconut oil is going to be a little solid at the top or bottom, or it's going to be loose. This is a medium day, so we'll see what happens. It could go either way. What we're going to do is we're basically kind of making a caramel sauce and really a butternut, a butterscotch sauce because we're using brown sugar. Okay, so, and I'll let you see on the top now. Okay, and we're just melting that in. Then we're going to see how this is real solid. So now there's still going to be, yeah, see, there goes. There's still going to be liquid coconut water kind of stuff coming out of there too. So what we want to do first for this butter beer is we just want to get everything melted down before we add our sugar. And look at this cute, actually you'll have to see it overhead, huh? Look at this darling spatula that Cheryl got me, witch's brew. It's perfect for today. So see how all this is melted? Now we're going to go ahead and put about two cups of brown sugar in here. And this is probably about one cup. I'm going to need to open up the other brown sugar. And I am just using an organic dark brown sugar. You don't have to use organic but I kind of look at it this way. We're making a super, super treat, right? And it's Halloween. So if this is the sugar you eat, I don't feel so bad about it. And that's about two cups. If you're measuring this like a grown up would measure it, make sure that you're packing it in your cup because that's how we measure brown sugar. And so, we're gonna to wanna to get this all melted in. Now, here's a way that you could speed up this process is because we're using, even though we're using full fat coconut milk, there's a lot of water in here that we're gonna cook out and cook down into a syrup. And this is one of probably the most time consuming things that we're gonna to do today. But it's pretty to watch. Doesn't it look like some kind of cauldron magic spell? It makes me wish that uh, I had a big cauldron to make this in. And so it's going to taste just like caramel. So like right now, you can even just see right here how watery it is. So we probably want it to reduce about half. So I'm going to turn up the heat to like a medium high to high. And so what you're seeing is you're seeing, you know, it kind of bubble up. You're seeing the steam come up and that's how it reduces down. It's letting go of that liquid. We're getting rid of it. And it's kind of fun to watch it turn from this to when it really is a syrup. And you could use this if you like iced coffees or teas, you could use this to sweeten out or put this in apple juice. So you can use it a lot of different ways other than just a butter beer. And you could also, 
you could incorporate it into some cakes and cookies and things if you wanted. You could make it a little thicker and kind of just fold that in or put it on top, drizzle it on top of a maybe, okay. We could do like a cauldron cake. So what we could do is make cupcakes, turn them upside down so the round part is on the bottom and drizzle this butterbeer syrup over the top and maybe put it on some vanilla whipped cream would be kind of an awesome idea. You guys can't, you can sort of see how it's really starting to do its thing. And all of this stuff is pretty easy to make. Like for the butterbeer, it's just more of this time, but it's kind of fun. And honestly, if you, when you make this again by yourself in the kitchen, I encourage you to go on Spotify, turn on some Harry Potter tunes. There's a whole station with all of the soundtracks from all the movies. So if you look up Harry Potter, you'll see that. And then when you're kind of doing this, it's kind of fun. And so I want to show you this too. I don't think it's thick enough yet. So I'm going to turn the heat off and take this off for a second. And I'm going to, oh, I'm going to rinse this off because <laughs> that was not my best move, was it? Obviously, this witch's Bruce whisk is not as magical as I thought it was. I thought it would not allow such things to happen. Okay, so once it's off the heat, you guys can see, then it kind of comes down. And you can see here. So it's thicker than it was before. And I think we'll actually see that better from this view. So it's thicker, but I'd like it to be a little bit thicker than that. We don't want it to be as thick as like hot caramel. And honestly, you could use it at this thickness, but I like it a little thicker. So that's why, honestly, that's the only reason we're doing it is because I like it thicker, just in case you were wondering. So we're going to put it back on again for a little bit longer. Okay, now we're really, really getting in there. So let me show you. You see how it keeps doing this? Okay, so I'm going to, I'm thinking this is probably about done. We're getting to, there's still some heat on here. So we're going to do... Move that back. I'm going to sit this on my hot pad. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little, about a teaspoon of vanilla to it. And if you do this while it's on this, the heat, it will start to bubble up. It's going to see, look, ooh, wasn't that fun? I'll do a little bit of that anyhow. So it can be a little thicker than this, but see how this is about double the thickness it was a minute ago when I checked? If you keep going, it really will become a very thick caramel. Which So the way I'm looking at it, is that a mistake? I don't think so. So Because <laughs> what we can do too right now is I can show you a couple of different ways that we can use this. Now, one thing you can do that you don't have to is, um, I think I have a little bit, let me rinse this out. I'll, sh we'll sh I'll show you something super cool, or at least I think it's super cool. I have, and you could use a frother, just like a regular old little hand frother to do this. This is a Vitamix Aero Disc. And it makes things really fluffy. Let me see if I've got, let me grab some um, barista. This is what's going to whip up the best. Anything that says barista on it. So this isn't in the recipe, but this is kind of fun. So I'm going to take about a cup of this and I'm going to make butterbeer topping. You can do this with any non-dairy milk you have and you can shake it up in a mason jar, mic 
take the metal part off, microwave it for about 30 seconds, and that'll help keep the bubbles up. So that's another way that you can do this. So that's, you don't need super fancy stuff. But I will show you what it looks like when you use this super fancy thing. So I'm pulling out my Vitamix. And this we're just going to use for the topping. This disc isn't like a regular Vitamix. It just actually infuses air into it. So when it's done, there's going to be about almost twice as much of this. So see here, and it gets a little frothy, but what it does is it makes barista froth. See, to the side, it's really thick. So if you don't have the air disc, which is like A-E-R disc, <laughs> just to make it a little more complicated, um, you could um, put, like, let's see, I know I have an, that's not a good example. This is good enough. So I might put, if I had a mason jar, about half that amount of non-dairy milk, I would close it really tight and I would shake it as hard as I could until a bunch of bubbles came. Or you can cheat and put it in your Vitamix and make all the bubbles, pour it in here. You still want it to be about to there after it's bubbled. You're not going to have a top on it or anything. You could put it in the microwave for about 20 to 30 seconds, and that helps it those bubbles stay a little bit more. Or if you have one of those hand frothers for um, cappuccinos, you can use one of those. And this is just a bonus to make it look a little more cool, you know, because we're all about the cool. And I'll do it in this glass. So, because this syrup, and this is again about how thick, see as it's cooling down, it's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to put probably to at least start with two tablespoons. And we can do this in a mug, and maybe we'll do that next. And maybe we could have hot milk in there. So I'm just going to put some soy milk because that's the non-dairy milk I use. You're probably going to want to use unsweetened because this is pretty much just sugar. So then we're going to pour some of this in. This is one way. We could also use um, sparkling water and to make it kind of like that as well. And then we're just going to kind of stir it in. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could heat this up. So I'm going to taste this and see if I did the right if it's sweet enough and I taste the butterbeer enough for me, you may use a teaspoon or a quarter cup. It's up to you. Oh my God, this is so good. I might have to make Cheryl come up. Cheryl, come over and taste this. But here, I'll show you overhead with me putting the phone, the optional, again, very optional, because this is a special thing for your Vitamix, but you could get for 10 bucks. Um, a little frother that's like battery operated. And I'll show you guys this the other way too. See, now that looks like a butterbeer, doesn't it? Okay. It like butter beer. Come on in. Come on. Come on. So this is Cheryl, everybody. She's my picky eater and taste tester. It's, you can have that one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take long, did it? And you could do the same thing. If this was warmed milk, we could stir some of this in. So I am going to go ahead and make a second one because I'm not being left out on this. Now, if you have, this milk is room temperature. If you have milk that's cold in the fridge, it could seize up the syrup. So you might have to um, heat it up. But typically, we're doing the milk only for a warm, but it's really too good just to do that. Okay. So then, again, a little bit of froth on top. Let me let you guys see that. And this is just like a 
a super easy, fun decoration. Some milks, milks that aren't barista aren't going to foam up as much as this. Okay, so some of you know already about my ice creamless milkshakes, but we're going to make one and I will um, send you guys the recipe or actually I'll tell you where you can get the recipe. We're going to need some oats, rolled oats, and I'm going to need some water. Then we're going to need some ice and either a little bit of ground chia seed, pectin, or xanthan gum. Because when I'm walking around Universal and I'm seeing the frozen butter beer, I am all about it. So I'm probably going to put about a quarter cup of oats. And you can find a similar shake on my blog, Healthy Slow Cooking, if you just look up ice creamless shake or pumpkin shake. You'll find the basics that we're talking about here. So what we're doing, I'm going to put about three cups of water in there. I probably put a little egg. I'm using the smaller, <laughs> the smaller blender, so we'll see how this works out. So first thing, I'm going to make the milk, which is going to be oat milk. So we can go ahead and add probably a quarter cup of syrup in here, maybe a little bit extra. Because the butter beers are just so awesome and they're like frozen and they put the frothy top on and it's just so enticing. Okay, so we put the right top on here. So we're going to make this into butter beer milk just by blending it with Vitamix or a different blender. I'm going to do this in two batches because I'm using the small blender. So what I'm going to do is put half of it in here. That's the only reason I'm doing this is that I'm doing this in a smaller blender. So I'm going to do one serving at a time and we'll make both. So I'm going to take really just a pinch to an eighth of a teaspoon of Zancom gum or you could use about a per a single serving maybe a teaspoon or two of ground chia seeds so xanthan gum is what people use to or what starbucks uses to pull together the frappuccinos to keep them together so basically we're kind of making something like that okay so i'll let you see that from the top see it's just sprinkled there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go in the slowest setting because I don't want it all just to flop over and stick to the side. There we go. And just get that incorporated a little bit. And we're not going to strain this milk because we're going to make it into a milkshake. So this is where I'm going to go to my fridge and I'm going to get some crushed ice. I do a bit of crushed ice. Okay. Let me show you overhead how I kind of decide. So see, and I rock it back and forth a little bit so you can sort of see the ice. That lets me know that's probably enough ice. Okay, now we're going to blend it. And what you're going to see, see how you can see some of the pieces there? You're going to see them get smaller and smaller. So when you're doing something like this, you want to start at a lower speed for a little while. Break those up a little bit more. And then get to a higher speed. 
Now at a certain point there, you lose your return. If you have it on high, the Vitamix will heat up. So it actually will start melting your ice. So kind of keep an eye on the thickness. how that looks like a milkshake you can make it we could put more ice in it and make it a little thicker but that's about the thickness of butterbeer let me get another um, clear glass so that you can see this a little bit better okay look at that and we can have it just right here because then we can put some of our fluff on it if we want to. So I've still got a little bit of fluff, not as much as before. I'll let you see that from overhead. Let me get that in view. I'm going to scoop some off of the other one just so I can finish this one off well. I want you to see it, see it at its best state. Because, you know, it's kind of a bummer that we don't get to have frozen butter beer at the parks. Look at that. Mm. And you get that like fluffiness from the top. And then you really get to taste that good vanilla butterscotch, milky frozen goodness. So it tastes a lot like an ice cream. Mm. 